Perhaps you heard of the expression concerted reaction mechanism. What exactly is a concerted reaction? We're going to talk about that in this video. So here is an example problem that is going to demonstrate what a concerted reaction mechanism is. So here we have 2-chlorobutane and we're going to react it with potassium iodide in DMF, a polar aproic solvent. So what we have is a secondary alkohalide, a good nucleophile, and a polar aproic solvent, which all of that favors an SN2 reaction. Iodide, the nucleophile, is going to approach from the back, attacking this carbon, expelling the leaving group. And here's the key point, all at the same time. Because this reaction happens in a single step, that makes it a concerted reaction mechanism. In a concerted reaction mechanism, all bond breaking and bond forming processes occur at the same time. So let's redraw this structure in a different way. So here we have carbon, and that carbon has a hydrogen, it has a methyl group, and it has an ethyl group. It also has a chlorine atom, and here iodide is coming in from this side. Now, as iodide approaches the carbon, it begins to form a bond. While that's happening, the bond between carbon and chlorine is breaking apart. So this bond is forming at the same time that this bond is breaking. That is a concerted reaction mechanism where all bond breaking and bond formation processes occur simultaneously. So anytime you have an SN2 reaction, you're going to have a concerted reaction because this occurs in a single step. The end result is we get an inverted product replacing the leaving group with the nucleophile. Now, because this is a concerted reaction mechanism, there's only one step in this reaction. So if you were to draw the potential energy diagram, you're only going to have one transition state. The same is true for an E2 reaction. An E2 reaction is also a concerted reaction mechanism where all bond formation and bond breaking processes occur at the same time. So in this example, we're going to use potassium hydroxide dissolved in water. Now let's say the Cl is in the front. There's a hydrogen in the front and one in the back. So here we have a secondary alkyl halide, a strong base, that's going to favor an E2 reaction. Now, because the chlorine atom is in the front, the base, hydroxide, is going to go for the hydrogen, the adjacent hydrogen, that's in the back. Because the E2 reaction, it requires, it's an anti-elimination -rea reaction. The base is going to go for the hydrogen that's anti with respect to the leaving group. So as the hydroxide grabs the proton, this carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. While this bond is breaking, a pi bond is forming between these two carbon atoms. A double bond is about to form there. And while that's happening, the carbon-chlorine bond is breaking at the same time, simultaneously. So these two bonds are breaking apart at the same time this double bond is forming. So because of that, this too is considered a concerted reaction mechanism. The bonds that are breaking are happening at the same time with the bonds that are forming. And so we're going to get a pi bond right in the middle. In other words, we're going to get an alkene. So because this is a concerted reaction mechanism, just like the SN2 reaction, the transition state it's going to be very similar. I mean, the uh, potential energy diagram is going to be very similar. We got potential energy on the y-axis, the reaction coordinate system on the x-axis. So for all concerted reaction mechanisms, they are all one-step reactions. 
And so you're only going to have one transition state in a potential energy diagram. So that's basically it for this video. So now you know what a concerted reaction mechanism is. It's simply a reaction where all bond breaking and bond forming processes occur simultaneously. And the SN2 and the E2 reaction are good examples of a concerted reaction mechanism.